Welcome to another session of story time with me. I'm Miss Seema and you're watching Seema Story Time. Yes, how are you all children today? Nice and bright and waiting for some exciting stories from us? Well, it's good to know that. Yes, and I hope you all are doing fine in whichever part of the world you are. You're sound and safe, staying at home, keeping the social distancing and wearing your mask every day great lovely children good to know that so children when you are young and when you are in your teens or when you are very young the times when you want to know a whole lot of things things which are happening around you and you are constantly asking questions to your parents to your siblings to your teachers whoever is around you you have a whole lot of thing going on in your head and you want to constantly ask those questions it's a good thing to do yes and in today's story the penguin who wanted to find out he is going through the same phase he is also going to constantly wanting to know what's happening around him so this penguin is a baby penguin and his name is Otto and he has a whole lot of friends with him in the story and they are constantly trying to find out new things which are happening around them yes don't you want to know that what is that I'm very excited and I'm really really thinking what is going through Otto's mind Otto's head yes so don't you think it's time to find out let's do that the name of the story is the penguin who wanted to find out let's read the story children otto was a penguin chick he lived on his father's feet at the bottom of the world Antarctica, the most southern region of the world with the coldest temperatures, there is no sunlight for four months of the year. It is only night. It is one of the harshest places on planet Earth, but it is where emperor penguins live. How do you know we are at the bottom of the world? Otto asked his friend Leo. Your father told my father, said Leo. Your father knows everything. Otto thought for a moment, then he shouted up at Claudius, Dad, there are lots of things I want to know about. Please talk to me. A bee came down and Otto looked into Claudius' face for the first time. I'm sorry, Otto, said Claudius. I hadn't realized how grown up you are now. What would you like to know? Why haven't I fallen off? asked Otto. Fallen off what? The world, Leo says. We live on the bottom of the world. We do. Antarctica is called the South Pole. But you won't fall off. Why not? Because I say so. Now we'd better stop talking and join the others. A blizzard is coming and it's going to be very, very cold. Otto wanted to ask what a blizzard was. But he soon found out. The wind got stronger and colder. Snow was driven at them harder and harder. Otto, come under the feathery flap of my tummy, said Claudius. It will protect you. They shuffled across the ice towards the other penguins who were huddling together to keep warm. Otto had never been so cold. He thought that the snow and the wind would go on forever. I didn't like that, said Otto, when the wind had died down at last. Well, you'll have to get used to it, said Claudius. One day, Claudius said, you are big enough to walk beside me now, Otto. Soon you'll have all the other chicks to play with. What other chicks, Otto said. There's only Leo and me. 
But Claudius was right. Otto and Leo were just the first chicks to hatch. Now all the grown-ups were shuffling around with chicks at, on their feet. At first, Leo and Otto were the only ones big enough to leave their fa father's feet to play. One of the new chicks wanted to join in, but he was too little. What's your name? Otto called. Gusto, the little chick called back. Can I play with you next time? When you are big enough, Otto replied. I'm not very big outside, but I'm enormous inside, said Gusto. You're going to have trouble with that one, laughed Claudius. Why? asked Otto. You are first chick, Claudius explained. It's your job to look after the others. It was true. The very little ones didn't understand that they must stay together to be safe, and Otto had to keep rounding them up. Come back, he yelled. I'm first chick and you must stay close to me. Oh, you're bossy, Otto, grumbled Gusto. The next morning, Otto called up to Claudius. I have an asking sort of feeling in my tummy. What is it? You are hungry, replied Claudius. Let's go and see if the ladies are back from the sea. The ladies? Yes, they've been eating fish and things so that you can feed you. They can feed you and the other chicks. I'm hungry too, Otto. I shall have to say goodbye and go off to the sea to find some food. I've had nothing to eat all winter. Otto was horrified. Don't leave me, Claudius. I need you. You'll be fine. Don't worry. I'll find a nice auntie to look after you. Otto had never been away from the rookery of penguins before. The bottom of the world is very big, he whispered. Look, Otto, said Claudius. Here's Anna. She'll be a good auntie for you. I don't want an auntie, said Otto. I want you. Claudius rubbed the top of Otto's head with his beak. I'm sorry, he said, but emperor penguins have to get used to lots of different mothers and fathers when they are growing up. We look after each other. Can you look after me? How? My asking feeling inside really hurts, said Claudius. You can help me by letting me go. Otto knew what he had to do. He waddled round to Anna. He's our first chick this year, said Claudius. I shall be very proud to be his auntie then, said Anna. Open your beak and I will give you some fish soup. In a few minutes, the asking feeling in Otto's tummy had gone, but so had Claudius. Luckily, Otto was so busy during the next few days that he didn't have time to meet Claudius. As the ladies came back from the sea, all the fathers disappeared one by one to feed themselves. Otto had to look after the chicks. When they began to get cold, Otto and Leo collected them into a tight huddle. But one chick stood all by himself looking out to sea. It was Alex, the last chick to hatch. Otto knew he must get him into the huddle quickly. Where's daddy? wailed Alex as soon as Otto reached him. I expect he was hungry, Otto said. Stay close to me and I'll look after you. That's what emperor penguins do. They look after each other. Otto tried to push Alex into the middle of the huddle, but he couldn't move. I want to stay with you, he said. Old bossy chick has a baby, laughed Gusto. Alex, this is Gusto, said Otto. He talks a lot. Can you tell stories? asked Alex. I like stories. Where do I get a story from? asked Gusto. Out of your head, said Otto. Start with once upon a time and just carry on. So that's what Gusto did. Soon little Alex was so happy listening to the story that he forgot how cold he was. Later they went to find Auntie Anna. Two chicks to feed, she said. I'll have to go back to the sea again. Does that mean I have to get used to somebody different? Asked Otto. Yes, said Anna kindly. But that's what we penguins do. I'll get used to it, said Otto bravely. 
As it turned out, Otto enjoyed meeting all the different grown-ups, especially Justin. He asked him all the questions that he could have asked, like to ask Claudius. In fact, he asked so many questions that sometimes Justin felt tired. Just one more question for today, said Justin. When can I toboggan? Otto asked. I have seen the grown-ups slide across the ice on their tummies. It looks fun. You'll be able to toboggan when you have your adult feathers, Justin said. When will that be? That's two questions, Justin smiled. He moved away, but he called back over his shoulder. Soon. A few days later, the cold wind began to blow and Otto knew he had to get the smaller chicks into a huddle. It was easier now there was gusto to tell stories. Little Alex crept up to Otto after the huddle. Otto, he said, I think I'd better tell you something. You are going bald. Otto looked at his tummy. There were patches of down missing and thick white feathers showing through underneath. Yippee, he shouted. Don't you mind, said Alex. Mind, said Otto. Going bald means I'm becoming a proper penguin. Soon Leo and all the older chicks had bald patches too. They all wondered what was going to happen next. It was another first chick who told them. Her name was Josie. Otto met her on the edge of the rookery. You have shed all your down, she said to him. That means you are ready. Really? Josie waddled all round him. Yes, really, you have got all your adult feathers. Now you are waterproof. What about me? Otto waddled around her. There's a tiny tuft left on your back. Shall I pack it off? No, it has to come off by itself when the feathers underneath are oily enough. Leo couldn't believe Otto was a proper penguin at last. How about me? he asked. You have two bits of down left on your back. Oh, please pack them off, Leo begged. No, Otto said. You must wait. Leo groaned. You are always waiting for something. Yes, grinned Otto. I am having to wait for you before we go to the sea. But don't worry, I am not going without you. The next day, none of the grown-ups would feed Otto or the other young penguins. You are not chicks anymore, they said. What do, what do we do now? Leo, Leo wailed. We are starving. What do you think we do? said Otto. Where can we find fish and squid and all the things the grown-ups keep bringing us? The sea, Leo said, and he started to waddle off. Otto shot past him. Toboggan, he cried. It's quicker and it's fun. Soon he bumped into Josie. I've always wanted to do this, she said. Me too, said Otto. But do you think it's all right for us to leave our huddles? They'll be fine, she said. It's warmer now. Come on, I'll beat you to the sea. But their jobs as first chicks weren't quite over. When they reached the sea, the young penguins were afraid to go on. Otto remembered what Claudius ha had said. Penguins look after each other. Food, Otto yelled as he and Josie splashed in. Come on, it's easy. The other young penguins jumped in and began chasing fish and squid. They weren't hungry for long. It's like flying in the sea, said Otto excitedly. Then Josie showed him one last thing. It's called Penguin's Leap, she said, as Otto torpedoed up and out of the water as fast as he could, landing on the cliff next to her. He felt so pleased with himself. He could toboggan, he could swim, he could feed himself, and now he could leap. Well, Otto, said Josie, do you like being a penguin? I'll get used to it, he said happily. The end. That was really an exciting story of Otto. Well, 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 I was right. 
the penguins are a very unique creatures they have so much happening in their lives isn't it yes and Otto was able to find out all those things and children do you know in turn we've learned a lot about penguins isn't it we came to know when their feathers fall and when they can toboggan when they can leap yes and how they are looked after by all the penguins isn't it there was a lot to learn I learned a lot out of it children I hope you like the story and we will come back with more stories for you similar kind of stories where you can learn a lot out of it isn't it great children that brings us to the end of another exciting story session with me children stay home stay safe look after your grown-ups be the warriors we want you to be and responsible citizens of your community and your country bye bye children see you soon <laughs>